Welcome back, everyone, to another market close live stream, folks. Hopefully, hopefully, the diamond hands begin to pay off because even as of this morning, things were a little bloody and a little painful. But my oh my, have things recovered and totally, almost totally U turn today. A pretty, pretty incredible reversal on the day because this morning I'm like, Oh man, my diamond hands are getting a little muddy here. This kind of sucks, but I ain't gonna sell because I'm not paper hand in this crap. Uh oh, these deals are way too good. And we even bought some more stocks this morning, which I kept telling myself is stupid, stupid. Kevin, stop buying. But eh, you know what? Things went up. This is nice. This is nice. Uh, take a look at this too. Bitcoin, folks, fifty nine thousand dollars. There we go. We are heading back uh, potentially to uh, that $60,000 range. We only briefly visited $69,000 before. I mean, if we look at it here, $60,000 was really a uh, March 12th phenomenon, and that was it. Uh, that's the only time we've ever really hit $60,000 was March 12th. Brief, brief little spike there, uh, and that's it. And now we are back to uh, getting to $60,000. Uh, we'll see. We're at $59,000 now, so we'll see if we revisit uh, Bitcoin. Remember, my thesis is I'm not selling any of my Bitcoin. The only reason I would sell my Bitcoin is in the event that I needed it to uh, to make sure that I hold on to my discounted uh, shares of, of either the electric vehicle companies or some of the oversold tech. In other words, it'd be a margin protection. Now, uh, my my plan is, you know, in the event we get a rapid, rapid skyrocket in Bitcoin because people have continued inflation expectations, there might become a moment I, I would decide to take some profits. <laughs> uh, but we are nowhere near that moment. Now, uh, let's uh, let's take a peek at what else is going on here. So let's go ahead and jump over to the market and see exactly uh, what's going on. We are about 23 minutes before the close here. Let's get our... <clears throat> Good old Weeble up, which remember, you can always get yourself two free stocks with Weeble by signing up at metkevin.com slash Weeble, and you will get two free stocks worth up to $1,850 when you deposit $100. Boom! Now we can pin that comment too. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so uh, let's see what we got. All right, so we got a uh, plug power, solid, solid rebound here. I think we're pretty much at bottom. Yeah, we're pretty much at rock bottom here uh, at, at plug. Still, a, actually, we hit we hit our prior support here. See this sort of third, 31 prior support? We literally, ah, we actually exceeded that a tiny little bit, exceeded that support a little bit. And uh, right now we are at $34. We are recovering on plug within the day. We got CCIV still relatively cheap, 23 bucks. But uh, certainly recovering here, coming back into our boxes that we've had John for a while. Charge point. Wow, look at this move on charge point. Now, keep in mind, I have also, uh, we created a, a little pie uh, in M1 Finance, and uh, it's the uh, chargers pie. So it's metkevin.com slash chargers, and you'll see it. Let's see if I can try to log into M1 Finance here. Uh, oh, yeah, here we go. Chargers. Okay, perfect. So let's go ahead and uh, put this up here. Dude. Okay, let me put up the Chargers Pie really quick. It's it's worth you checking out. Okay, that button and that button. See, this is the metkevin.com slash Chargers Pie. Just a couple days ago, I was talking with course members, and we, we were coming up with this together. Uh, and we decided probably the easiest way to get into the charging plays uh, might be to sort of uh, diversify in, into something like this. So metkevin.com slash chargers, take a peek at that. Uh, working on a on a battery one too, but haven't made one yet. Uh, so obviously, uh, if you're in the course, you'll get an alert for that. Okay, let's go back to the charts here. So charge point up 10% right now. We got uh, CCIV moving up uh, about uh, nine, uh, nine over 9% here. Very nice. Givo's bouncing back with 9%. Very nice bounce back, right? We're bouncing back from those super lows. We almost hit under $80 today on Lemonade. And man, I was too, I mean, then again, we've got margin. But, uh, you know, this morning I was, we we're looking at this. I'm like, if, it, if this drops under 80, we're buying it. I didn't do it. Too much margin. The 32 cents was too much. But that's okay. I own plenty of Lemonade. So I'm super excited to see uh, Lemonade up 7%. That's great. Bouncing off these bottoms here. Still obviously cheap relative to what it has been. Good move on Blink here, 6%. We got Neo, uh, Neo up 5.8%. Uh, not bad, especially since we saw this with a lot of FUD uh, over the last few days. We saw Neo 
Uh, gosh, Neil was down to like 34 there for a hot minute. It was crazy. Uh, absolutely crazy. And we've got, uh, what else do we have? Penn National Gaming, back over 100 bucks. Nice. We got GM. Uh, GM's trying to get back to 60. GM never sold off as, as crazily as uh, some of these other stocks. Certainly not like Neo or the others. Then what else? Carnival. Oh, we still, we got recovery play moving too. It's kind of like people are just flying back into stocks. You look at this Tesla. Tesla's almost up four freaking percent today. Oh my gosh. It was down like 3% this morning or more. I mean, it was a disaster this morning. I mean, we've had a solid like 7% swing here in the day. This is really, really incredible. Uh, we got uh, quantum scapes up. We got squares up, bitcoins up, everything. I mean, a lot of these things are up. Obviously, we'll see in a moment here what's not up. Uh, EXPI uh, going up. We've got Peloton going up. Uh, still got some recovery plays also playing up here. Etsy's up. Very nice. I mean, gosh, you know, Tesla under 600. I mean, how many times have we talked about Tesla under 600 as being a steal? It's incredible. Uh, Arkimoto, wow, they were down 7% at one point this morning. And uh, now we are, uh, now we're actually up uh, three quarters of a percent. Absolutely incredible, folks. Remember the last time this happened, uh, it was a Tuesday. I want to say it was like March 9th or something like that. Here, let me look in the calendar. Uh, it was like March 9th or something like that. It was a Tuesday. Yep, March 9th. It was exactly three weeks ago that this happened before, and that literally started like a three or four day rally uh, in the market. Uh, everything just started rallying like crazy. Looking at plug here. Yeah, plug's got a very, very nice move here on plug. So also, I mean, a lot of these just extremely oversold. So very nice to see uh, these, these movements sort of justifying a little bit of a return here. Very nice. We've got, uh, let's see, what else here? Shifts up a little bit. Uh, shift technology disney's up 185 pinterest still right under that 70 rubber band that we keep dancing around we've got uh okay and then into the reds we've got nga is actually still red in this madness let's go all the way down canoe got beat down like horribly now i did not own any canoe until this morning i did buy the dip on canoe uh, i think i'm in at like 932 i want to say is the number so uh, basically roughly where it is now within a few pennies, I would not be surprised for this to rubber band back, maybe not to the full 15, but I think there's a good chance this is going to rubber band to like 14, 13, 14, somewhere around there. So I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and pick up some, some Benji's there. Uh, I, you know, I, I can't see this going too terribly much lower, but then again, you know, it could go down to eight as well. I mean, it did already today, but uh, anyway, definitely. Definitely added a little bit of that one. You know, I'll, I'll keep that one for a while. If that one doubles, I might be gone on that one. So let's see here. Wayfair, uh, Roblox, uh, what else here? Moderna, Bumble, Affirm. Wow, Affirm, seriously, still selling off in this? That's crazy. Wow, look at Affirm, folks. Holy smokes. I mean, it is almost down 40% since IPO. Wow, 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 we wow, wow. Jeez. And it's certainly nice to see some green coming back here. There is still obviously some leftover red, but a big, big, big U-turn, especially in the uh, electric and electric vehicle space, the green energy space. Uh, big moves here. Plug, CCIV, Sun Power, Charge Point, Gevo. I mean, these are all the guys that have just been getting destroyed. And you know what? They're still cheap. They're still cheap. So even though they're green today, these guys are still cheap. Uh, you know, I, I, golly, I mean, these are the moments where I'm like, oh man, I just, I wish I had zero margin. I'd just be plowing in. But then again, you know, I can't really say that because I have been plowing in uh, money uh, into these stocks uh, at all these dips. So, um, or at, at most of them, you know, it's just every day, add a little bit, add a little bit, add a little bit. Although some days I have added a lot. I mean, last week, uh, I still haven't made a video on this publicly, but last week I plowed 500k into one stock um yeah anyway i gotta make a public video about that one of these days but anywho so look at this tesla now up four percent redfin up four percent here we go now we're getting a rocket ship coming in i mean that's exciting uh churchill capital i mean then again you know we're gonna get a lot of folks that are gonna say no no this is just the bull trap don't worry this is just the beginning of the end uh, this is just the opportunity where people think, oh, that's it. We have validation. Let's plow in. 
and then it's going to sell off again tomorrow. Well, maybe, maybe. Guess what I'll do if it sells off tomorrow? Bye. <laughs> and if it doesn't, if it keeps going up, hey, I built out a, a whole ton of these stocks over the last uh, month here. I, I have loaded up on too many, too many shares. <laughs> but uh, yeah, getting getting things have gotten a little tight, tight around here. I'm like, Lauren, we can't buy anything. Because all we're doing is buying stonks. And Lauren's like, what about what about like a new Wii game for Jack? Play the old ones. <laughs> you know how many CCAV shares I could buy for a Wii game? Like three. <laughs> oh man, it is uh it's kooky. Kooky world we are in. So we'll see what happens. Uh we'll see. All right, let's uh let's listen to the uh, the countdown. Oh no. Okay. All right. We got TV commercial everywhere. Oh, fine. TV commercial on Fox Business. TV commercial on CNBC. Well, what are we supposed to do then? Okay. Fine. We will go to Bloomberg TV, and we'll pull them up. All right. Oh yeah. Here we go. Is that a trend um, that we can have? have, have uh oh. Hold on. I got. I got too many stuff. Too many things up. Hold on. I could deal with this. I could deal with this. Too many windows. This this is what happens. This is not like Windows Vista either. It's just just way too much going on. Close, close, close. Okay, did I do it? I think I did it. Ha <laughs> ha. Structured for that. So it's not the case that every mutual fund could, could convert here an ETF, but definitely a lot of interest in it. Yeah, I see someone there disagrees. Um, Claire, um, when we talk nope, definitely, about- Definitely still have two open. Hold on. <laughs> and how it's become so dominant here. here. Uh, I am curious as to uh, whether we'll just start to see sort of, I guess, almost like a re-reversal. I mean, there are some people that look at the ARC ETFs and they say, well, I mean, they're all- The re-reversal. Now the suits are talking about it. <laughs> we only have a few seconds left here. I'm rambling. <laughs> Definitely. I mean, I think with ARC ETFs have, have shown that people are really interested in this kind of product. So yeah. I think it's something that is All attracting right. people to the to the wrapper. All right. Nailed well it. said. Bloomberg's Claire Ballantyne. Four seconds left to go. This. That's, that's weird how they cut that off. Uh, wow. Re-reversal is what they might talk about. Now that's crazy. Re-reversal? I mean, folks, this is exactly why I always say even even if the you know look we we had our big dips at the beginning of March then they went up again then they go down again whatever I just want the discount I don't care give me the shares cheaper that's that's all I want and that's why I've just been plowing money it's it's horrible it's bad I'm I'm just way I'm way out of balance it's it's a really bad thing but don't don't plow money into stocks as much as I am uh, but, uh, definitely don't be afraid to buy when things are getting cheaper. That's, that's the time to be buying. Uh, and, and things are still relatively cheap. You know I mean? This is just like, it's just like a half day of green here. Okay. Things can be super red again tomorrow, but remember what happened last time. You know, the history does, it doesn't always repeat itself, but sometimes it rhymes. And what happened last time was as soon as people thought, oh, maybe there's going to be a re-reversal. We're going to reverse back. The, as soon as that happened, all of the hedgies, the weenie baby hedgies are like, oh my gosh, look at all the good deals we could get in tech. And, and then they come right back. They always come clawing right back or crawling, crawling. I prefer crawling because they're babies. Yeah. All right. What do we got? Is there a, let's see, is there someone we can watch here? No. Come on. Who can we make fun of? I need a weenie baby to make fun of. Please give me a weenie baby somewhere. Who's got a weenie baby? I don't, I don't know. Oh, 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 what do we got? What are they saying? Yesterday, you can see that the Dow got back to essentially flat, but uh, has slid again a little bit in the last uh, 20. Wait, what is all that noise? Points uh, as we speak. There we go. Uh, Shannon, I'll come to you first. I mean, the 10 year spiked uh, to its highest level in about uh, 12 months, 13 months to 174. Earlier, it's at 173 at the moment. Uh, today's declines relatively reassuring that they're only small in light of that spike in yields. Absolutely. I think we continue to reset our expectations around the 10 year. And while we certainly have experienced a, a meaningful uptick in terms of percentage, we have to remember where we are from a historical perspective and that much of the enthusiasm around economic reopening um, has really been, you know, kind of 
coinciding with this increase in yields. And so while there continue to, you know, we do expect there to be some pressure as we look forward over the next several quarters on some of the, the hottest growth names and particularly those that seem somewhat overvalued. I think in essence, you know, if we're looking at modest inflation over the next couple of quarters and continuing to see increased expectations for economic growth, I think that we're coming to terms with the fact that maybe these sell-offs that we were experiencing over the last few weeks, every time we had a jump in the tenure. Oh, I forgot I wasn't there. Given the lift that many of these particularly big tech stocks are going to have on, on this economic growth that we anticipate. Yeah. In other words, she's saying, look, inflation has just been overshadowing uh, the, the awesomeness of the companies that we like. Couldn't agree more. Uh, all right, so let's see how are things evolving here into the uh, into the close here. We've got nine minutes to go into the close. We've got uh, oh ubiquity, nice, good sell off in ubiquity. I'm not trying to cheer that, but I wanna I wanna enter ubiquity with a bigger position. And I, it was one of the stocks I was considering for my big 500k purchase. It's not what I ended up buying. Uh, and uh, right as I was considering it, the thing just runs up like literally runs up to like $400 a share or more. And I'm like, yep, nope, there goes that. I'm not chasing that crap. So uh, now it's now it's back down. So if, if I could see this get back under 300, that'd be interesting. Redo numbers on it. Uh, okay, a little bit of red on Voyager, no big deal. Wayfair, no biggie here. Yeah, Clever's got some work to do. GHBI, honestly, 12, 12.91. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. That's pretty low. Folks, we should we should add a little bit to the GHVI. We should give them a little bit of love. Let's do that. 12, I don't know. Not not too much, okay? We we can't be excessive here. Uh not excessive. No, 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 no. How about 2500? 2500 shares. Uh good to uh, limit. Yeah, whatever. All right. All right, here we go. Cool. That actually lowered my cost basis a little bit. <laughs> uh, okay, let's go here. Uh, uh, at uh, 1294 ish. Or is it 93 ish? Oh, whatever, it doesn't matter. Mm. Okay, good. Good, 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 good. All right. Uh, so what's what's this talk over here? Some of these names to be candid rather than, you know, moving out of them completely in order to fund some of those cyclical trades. It just feels like right now, if you're buying cyclicals because you're expecting this robust economic recovery, why wouldn't you also expect there to be a, a lift for these big cap tech trades, whether we have an economic recession, as we saw last year, or whether we're anticipating the, you know, the, the growth of the consumer and consumer ad spend, the return of enterprise spend, and then all of the other things that a company like Alphabet has in its arsenal? You know, I, I can understand why, given the relative performance of these names, why we're seeing this. Speed Red, Redfin right is now. good. I see somebody asking about Redfin. Redfin's great. I've got a huge position in Redfin, though, so I, I just, I, I just hold. Hi, Josh. So, Wolf, Amazon is working on a new networking chip. That's according to a new report there in the information. The chip could power the hardware switches that move data around networks. And if it works, it could reduce Amazon's reliance on Broadcom, which is lower here in today's trade. Bernstein's Stacy Rasgon says Amazon has the scale and size to pull this off, but there would be challenges. Broadcom's tech works well, he says, and it's sticky. Broadcom, by the way, does not call out Amazon as a significant customer. Big tech companies we know, like Amazon, are increasingly chip designers themselves because it can translate into lower costs and better performance. Back to you all. Josh, thanks so much for that. Uh, Anastasia, do you like the chip stocks and is this a threat to them? I definitely like the yeah, chips. Move off this for We'll come right back to this. We got five minutes yeah. to the close. What is this? Seriously? Dry mouth, dry mouth ads? This is not what we want to see. This is not what we're, this is not what we're paying for. Oh, wait, we're not paying that, that trade. Uh, we would just say be a little bit more selective, be a little bit more active, perhaps, in what you are pursuing in this next, maybe longer term cyclical recovery. And that, you know, includes things like, are, are they too loud? 
Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put them back at this level right here. Financials will, will continue to participate in that ride. Uh, maybe some of the yield curve plays that, you know, we've seen and talked about, okay. like steepeners, continue to perform as well. Yeah. Um, but just you know, be mindful of, of where you're placing those bets and be mindful that volatility may be ahead. All right. We're speaking here with uh, Mona Mahajan, of course, Allianz Global Investor. She's sticking with us, Mona. But this is the part of the show where we have an interlude for Taylor to talk about her cat. Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, Romaine, we are not talking about pets on this program, but we will talk about Chewy because we are going to get those earnings after the bell. Come and take a look at this stock. We're up. Is it, is it just too loud? Is it better if I go to, I think it might just be too loud. Uh, always too, the news streams are always too loud. Okay. Let me know if this one's better. JP Morgan looking for some questions around the customer better? acquisition trends. And again, remember, we're coming into some very big, tough comps. A year ago, it's when we all bought pets and adopted pets. And so this quarter is going to have some very tough comps relative to a year ago. So this is a stock we're certainly watching as we're all pet lovers on this program. Let's flip up the board and get back to serious fundamental analysis. We're going to do that with Mona. Let me bring you back in here. I'm just showing you a quarterly chart, which finally shows the tech after five quarters of outperformance is the underperformance. Tomorrow is the end of Q1. When does that underperformance become a buying opportunity? Now, yeah, you know, look, it's it's been 10 years of a tech growth story. So really, since the last crisis, the financial crisis in 08, um, we've seen growth outperform value pretty consistently. And so, you know, yes, we've gotten about two quarters of, of value outperformance. Um, but when you look at it from a long term chart. OK, so so that volume's good now. Is my volume too loud or is or is my volume OK now relative to that one? Levels or, or reach the last peak. Um, and, and there's about a 10 to 15 percent downside or, you know, value our performance opportunity uh, over that range. Now, longer term, you know, if you are a, a long term investor, maybe a three, five, even 10 year horizon, um, we do think some of these secular growth th themes are here to stay. You know, we call it the third or fourth industrial revolution um, areas like, you know, AI robotics, like cybersecurity, cloud computing, um, and certainly areas like clean energy and, and EV. Uh, all in early innings still, we think of secular, you know, uh, themes and secular growth. And so from our perspective, you know, for longer term investors, uh, we are already starting to see some interesting opportunities. Now, keep in mind, because we think there's another leg in the value uh, opportunity, we do think that we'll also see another down leg in, in the tech opportunity. And so that's really where you can get your tactical opportunity. So I would have the list ready for those long term investors and really kind of choose your opportunities over the next three months or so. And with now, the moves that we've seen in yields here and the concerns, I guess, about what that could mean for uh, inflation and more importantly, inflation expectations and what the Fed does uh, in the short run or maybe in the long run. I am low. curious, Mona, as to whether the the need to sort of be a little bit uh shorter in duration on some of those mm -hmm. bets or whether it's in the treasury market itself or really on other assets as well um what do you do in this situation yeah you know it, it is interesting there okay okay all right i turned them up a tiny little bit and we got to go to the closing chart here in just a sec but i'm gonna i put a little sticker for where to put them and where to put me so i'm gonna put me here and i'm gonna put them at uh, this little level here. And then let me know if you like this here. It's more stagflationary. So uh, we don't want to necessarily go down eh? that path. Balance? Here. Um, that being said, when we think about, for example, the 10 year yields, uh, over the last 10 years prior to the pandemic, the average 10 year treasury yield was 2. All right. So we'll try that. We'll go to the sticks. Uh, and then CNBC, I'm going to try to put at the same level. They've We've got them here. Reopening the economy. Yep, you like Devon Energy, you like some of the banks. All right. What is your main theme? Good, good balance. So we think value does well here as rates go up, given the larger deficit. Mm -hmm. Banks do well. Goldman Sachs, a great spot, raised lots of deposits in their Marcus Bank, ready to lend. Okay. Um, investment banking going to do well for a very long time here. So we like Goldman. On the energy side, love Devon Energy. It's around $22 a share. Oh, we got to go to the sticks on CNBC. I got a, I should have done this like three months ago. You still got groups like financial, consumer, discretionary, and industrial higher, but groups like consumer staples, utilities, and technology, they're all down more than 1%. So is healthcare, weighing on the overall market. NASDAQ down two tenths of a percent. Russell 2000 does rebound from a sharp drop, still lower for the week, though, up 1.66%. Dow closing down about 85 points. So coming off the lows there 
and it's just a pretty crazy volatile last few minutes of trading, Wilfred. Yeah, volatile last hour. We so nearly went positive on the Dow at the top of the show, but uh, end down 100 points. So welcome to the closing bell. I'm Wilfred Frost along with Sarah Eisen. As mentioned, the Dow down 100 at the close, uh, or 0.3%. Uh, S&P also down 0.3%. The Nasdaq down 0.1%. The Russell, the outperformance day, up 1.7%, but is the worst performer this week after a big gut check yesterday. Financials, consumer discretionary industrials, the three cool. positive sectors. The other eight were negative. Uh, consumer staples, the worst performer, down over 1%. Oil down 2% today. Gold down 2% today. Uh, and we did see the dollar up 0.4 as yields rose. The 10-year touched 174, closed at 172.7. Investors are now awaiting earnings from Lululemon, PBH, BlackBerry. And I feel like they kind of ran their music pretty loud there. But uh, look at that Lulu, Chewy, BlackBerry. Oh, we'll have to pull those up. Let's see really quick what's happening here in the after hours, though. Uh, that's exciting. Uh, so let's see what's happening in the after hours or, or how things close. So uh, plug, we got plug closing at 10%, Churchill 10%, uh, API coming in clutch over 50 here, Jivo uh, 9%, API 9% ish, uh, Lemonade, Xping 7.5%, GameStop almost 7%, giving back a uh, bear, not, not much here in the after hours yet. A little too early to tell how things are going to land in the after hours. Uh, does look like overall relatively green, not seeing big reds in the after hours here. Uh, we've got end phase ending up about 6%, little volatile close there. Neo up 5.7%. We've got Tesla up almost 4%. Uh, if we include the after hours, it's up 4%. Very, very exciting. Uh, we've got uh, Bitcoin still sitting right there at 59K. Seems like it's got some real resistance there right at 59K. We've got uh, Square. Uh, up 2.7 percent let's go ahead and just look at the quick big losers here 930 as a finish on canoe ubiquity down uh, uh canoe obviously huge sell-off we opened a position on a canoe uh sort of at the at this bottom here where we stand we've got wayfair down four percent still well over 300 though uh we've got what else here matterport's down uh, about 1.74 percent it's at about 13 a share uh, we did add to Matterport. Amazon's down about a half with Walmart, Tattooed Chef, DocuSign a quarter, Pinterest a tenth. No, actually, not a horrible day. Not not a horrible day at all. We'll go ahead and pull up earnings in just a moment. We did get AMC was down about just a little more than a quarter, uh, down about half percent in the after hours. But uh, after hours just beginning, of course. Let's go ahead and turn on uh, CBC here. Let's listen to Sarah. And let's pull up earnings in a moment here. here and, and for that to derail some of what we've seen in terms of the stock market gains. Yes, and yes, Sarah. Uh, I switched my view on bond yields on January 5th after having been a bond bull for four years, saying that the Georgia Senate election results essentially meant all branches of government would be in democratic hands, the deficit would get out of control, and the yields would go up. At that time, I was looking for 150 as my target. That has come and gone. I made 175 my target. We exceeded that during the day today. I'm looking at 2%. And the major reason for looking for yields to rise, Sarah, is the fact that you have a $3 trillion infrastructure program which President Biden will outline in Pittsburgh tomorrow. And there is not going to be enough of tax increases to finance it. You and Wilf had a great discussion with Mark Short. It uh, looks like, by the way, Biden just signed a two-month extension for the PPP program through May 31st borrowing will increase and that is going to get reflected in the yield and that is a major reason for looking for yields to rise even further than they have so far. Shannon do you get worried uh, at any point that things are just too stretched that the risks uh, we're not focusing on enough whether that's uh, the Archego story of, of recent days where someone can have quite so much leverage and, and, and see it evaporate all of a sudden or it's something like an ARK ETF launching, buying its own ETF. Are you worried about any of those little factors? <laughs> True, buying its own ETF, they are. We talked about that in the ARK video yesterday. And I do think that what they do is they color our expectations 
for these bouts of volatility throughout the rest of the year. So while we're certainly constructive on the equity markets based on that foundation of economic growth that we talked about earlier, we do think that there are going to be these blips. We saw it with GameStop. We saw it recently with the trading on Friday. Uh, okay, we here we go. Uh, Lululemon just reported earnings. We've got gross margin of 58.6%. That's really good on, on, on a product like that. Earnings per share came in about nine cents higher at $2.58 versus the expectation of $2.49. They did beat the EPS estimates again by about nine cents. We had uh, operating margin at 26.5% and revenues coming in at $1.73 billion, making a net $329 million. They also sold about, it looks like $4 million more than expectations. Uh, actually, that might be about $40 million more than expectations. Excuse me. Uh, Lulu revenue was $1.7 billion versus an esp estimate of $1.66 a billion. So Lulu, a uh, good beat here. Not massive, not a massive beat at all, but uh, oops, there we go. Uh, not a massive beat. We, we actually have the stock pretty volatile here uh, in the after hours right now. Uh, not, uh, uh, I, I wouldn't say stable at all. So maybe not the size of a beat people were looking for uh, at a Lulu. Here you go. CNBC now talking about it. We beat them to it again on both the top and the bottom line for Lululemon's fourth quarter, with revenues representing growth of 21% in North America, up 47% internationally. Total nice. comps up 21% direct to consumer, so that's mostly your online sales, up 94% stores. Uh, okay, Chewy just came in with net sales of $2.04 billion versus an estimate of $1.96 billion. Uh, that means they have a beat by uh, what is this about four? Also about forty billion dollars over at Chewy, or forty million dollars at Chewy. Their EBITDA came in at uh, way way higher. Adjusted EBITDA of uh, what is this? Sixty million dollars versus an expectation of only three hundred thirty thousand dollars. Really? That the expectation was that low? What analysts were expecting? Well, the revenue number is actually above. So a bit of a mixed bag when it comes to the guidance, particularly for that mm -hmm. full year. But this quarter that just passed was a very strong one and shares are now up one and Chewy's up about 3% in after hours on that uh, EBITDA beat. Yeah, co comps of more than 20%, 21% is, is a hard thing in retail these days. Courtney Reagan, thank you very much. Shannon, this is a stock that got sucked into the pullback. Uh, Lulu, uh, only up about a quarter of a percent. It's it's fighting between a quarter and a half percent. But uh, Chewy Chewy had a, a much better beat there on that EBITDA. That was a really big beat. And so they're up about three to four percent right now. Numbers or not? I think it might be. Uh, you know, I think there's part of this that there was a little bit of a pullback. You know, this was seen as a momentum play, as you said, a stay at home play. Um, the reality is, is that prior to the pandemic, um, you know, we were really looking at this as an in-store uh, story. And now with the growth that they've had in e-commerce um, and looking over the course of the next couple of years with a re-engaged consumer, um, despite the higher price point for, for Lulu's products, I do think that there's an opportunity here, especially if you're trying to differentiate within specialty retail. Um, I think that there's a, a different experience. A lot of Lulu sit in these lifestyle shopping centers rather than in a traditional mall. And so I think there might be an opportunity. I've, I've missed on this one previously, um, but this is looking pretty compelling with the numbers that uh, were just reported. Sri Kumar, I, I wanted to pivot back. Uh, not bad. I mean, that's that's, that's pretty, pretty, solid, uh, uh, pretty solid movement there. Uh, let's just look at the uh, press release here for Clever, Clever Leaf Holdings. Uh, this year's obviously public. You can just Google this and find this here. Cleverleaf just reported revenue at 28, uh, revenue increased 28% to $3 million. Small company. All in cost per gram of dry flour improved to 22 cents per gram. We've got gross profit increased to $2.3 million compared to 1.5. Net loss improved uh, to uh, $11.6 million. So still losing money. Revenue is substantial growth there in uh, revenue. We ended 2020 in position of strength as we continue to develop commercial partnerships, grow our international distribution network, and establish clever leaves within a new category of growing cannabis. Uh, that, uh, okay, let's see. What I, I don't really want to read all this. I really want to go to their numbers. Oh, projections. Do we have projections here? Or is it under Outlook? Financial results. Here we go. Outlook. Not providing guidance. Okay, fine then. Why not? Oh, here we go. No, no, no. In light of these priorities, 
Uh, Cleverleaf expects the full year 2021 revenue to grow between 17 to $20 million with a gross margin of about 61%. That's really good. The company expects full year 2021 adjusted EBITDA to be in the range of 24, negative 24 to $26 million. That's not bad relative to how much they're losing per quarter here in 2020. So they're really heading to that, that path to profitability. Conference call later today. Let's see the statements here. Wow. Lots of cash on hand. Current assets, 95 mil. I like looking at cash. The most of it's cash. So, uh, but then again, they collect a lot of their, their payments in cash because, uh, well, the cannabis industry. Uh, then we've got liabilities at 51 mil. Current liabilities, only 10 mil. I mean, they're very well capitalized. No, no capitalization risk here on the balance sheet. That's very, very good. And then we've got statement of ops. Revenue, uh, so good growth here on revenue, really good on the profit margin growth. That's good for the year ended. That's very, very good. I like to see that. 61%, uh, good growth here. Their expenses were basically flat. They actually fell. Their general and admin expenses fell. That's incredible. Their sales and marketing expenses fell. That's incredible. Their expenses are down, yet their revenue's up substantially. Wow, that's really good. So so they're really streamlining the business here more. This is a small position, but it is a position that I have uh, in the cannabis play. Not bad. And they're expecting this to, to go down to about 24 to 26 mil of a loss next year. So continued cost cutting and revenue growth. Good. That's very, very good. Okay, let's go back. Uh, so Chewy, we know beat as well. We already covered this, but let's listen to what CNBC is saying. Yo, Kev, do you think we'll have another green day tomorrow? We have a house of pain. You know, just judging based on what happened last time, we could see another three to four days of green based on what happened last time. No, no guarantees. That's what's going to happen. But that's all it took last time is a half a day of green and the next four days were green. Kamalshmi Kumar, Shannon Sakosha, Anastasia Amoroso, it's good to have all of you here. When we come back, much more on Lululemon's report. The stock is trading higher now. Is it, is it just me or is the CNBC music loud today? percent higher to go from here now it's lower maybe it's all over the place plus online pet retailer chewy it's been a big pandemic winner shares are up more than 100 percent over the last year it also just reported a blowout quarter and coming up the company ceo will be here to break down those latest results we'll bring it to you in a minute plus we will discuss the outlook for okay. video games and esports after the pandemic with the president of activision blizzard we're back on closing bell in just 90 seconds okay. Yeah, as, as long as it sounds good. I think it's just this, This one of the issues with the, the audio is uh, not having the big headphones on. I don't get that that studio sound feedback. So thank you for helping me uh, fact check this. So uh, Lucid, somebody mentions that there was a CNBC is loud. Was CNBC loud relative to me? Uh, yeah, anyway. Okay, uh, let's go jump on over. Let's jump on over to, yeah, the, the channel, the channel volume is really annoying, but oh well. Uh, there, so apparently Lucid tweeted something. What did they tweet? Uh, ready to go behind the scenes? Tune in tomorrow for a closer look at the production ramp up of Lucid Air with our general assembly team. Oh, that's cool. Let's pull this up. So they got some, uh, some nice B-roll to help pump the stock. <laughs> well, let's take a look at this. All right, cool. Wow. Yeah, look, it's an elevator. It goes up and down. Wow. Oh, it goes back and forth, forward too. Oh my goodness. Wow. <laughs> it's like a, some dude with a joystick. <laughs> no, it, it's obviously, it's just, I'm sure it's just an edited loop, but uh, wow. Okay. All right. Good, good job. Good job, Lucid. Yay. They do have another pumper here. Listen to this pumper. Hold on. Oh, I don't think we can listen to it if I have my my Bloomberg TV playing. So let's just mute this for a moment. What is this? To be able to have this Atmos experience in a lucid air is going to really round out the human experience inside the car. The technology around the automobile and immersive sound, entertainment, these technologies are moving so fast. And I really think this is going to inspire new ways of thinking about audio and entertainment within a vehicle. This is going to be one of those moments where people really are going to remember the first time they experienced this. Okay. Interesting. 
Okay, so uh, let's see here. Tesla is the best ETF out there, comprising of EV, solar, uh, insurance, and charge. <laughs> Honestly, that is that is the most brilliant comparison I've I've seen for Tesla in a while. Basically, calling Tesla an e an ETF of its own uh, because of all of the different things that uh, all the different verticals. I could not agree more with your statement. Uh, that's, that's a, a, that's a very interesting comparison. I, I like that. What ETFs do you like Tesla? What stocks do you like Tesla? Do you say anything else? Tesla? <laughs> uh, that's pretty bad. Oh, did ARC go green? ARC space? Nope. ARC uh, ended up uh, down about 1%. That's way better than that 7% decline of an open they had. Woo. That was a rough, rough, rough open. Look at Chewy though, folks. After hours here blowing up. Let's go to the day here chart just to compare Chewy uh, over time here. Let's see. Chewy, zooming out nice and slowly here on Weeble. If you want to zoom out nice and slowly like this too, make sure to get two free stocks with Weeble. Deposit $100 to give you two free stocks worth up to $1,850. So, uh, yeah, they've definitely sold down since about $120 a share uh, all the way down to where they sit now at about $89 or I'm sorry, $79. So pretty substantial, like forty dollar drop there. Good thirty percent down. This uh, this our latest earnings report here is really pushing uh, Chewy though. So uh, I do not uh, personally invest in Chewy. That doesn't make it bad. Chewy, let's try it. Chewy.com. Look at that. Probably because I don't have pets. Chewy.com. Pet food, pet toys. I mean, this is like going to PetSmart, but online. I, mean, I used to love going to that store. Can you buy fish on here too? Is a far. Oh my goodness. <gasps> What? No, it's just food for fish. Yeah, okay, 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 yeah. I, ca I can't imagine you actually... Can you actually buy fish online? I don't know, maybe you can. Supplies? No, I don't see it. Darn. Or soon you'll be able to buy like a parakeet online or something like that too. <laughs> uh, they just have to ship them fast. Like a drone delivery, your your pets. <laughs> uh, okay, so where were we? Let's uh, let's see, what, what else is happening in the after hours here? So we got Chewy up 7.4%. Nice movements on Chewy here. We've got actually really not terribly much happening here. Not much. Chewy at 2%. Wait, where's Chewy? Oh, Chewy's not on this. Chewy's only on recently viewed. So Chewy's got the big mover here. Everything else is pretty nominal. 2, 1%. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's really nothing to speak of here in the after hours. It's really the day that was just incredible. I mean, what a crazy day, right? Crazy. All right, let's let's jump back over here. What, what are they are they talking more about Lulu? I don't know. Let's see. Maybe uh, kind of. I'm a little bit Lulu'd out. Let's see if we can. Uh, let's listen to this. Hold on. What do we got going on over here? Nothing, because I can't hear it. Run up higher for well, yield. When you're talking to people and you're kind of looking at some of these price move movements, Liz, uh, there there has been a lot of chatter here that once you start to see those yields come up a little bit closer to that 2% level, you're going to get a flood of buyers coming back into this, particularly yeah. of foreign buyers who who need that yield one way or another, and that that will, in effect, act as a, I guess, sort of a somewhat of a cap on where yields can go. Are you finding any credence to that? Yeah, I mean, th they will eventually come. I think that's true. That's what people say. Um, it, they haven't shown up yet in force, right? Um, but I think you're right. 2% is becoming attractive relative, even on a hedge basis, it's been getting more attractive. If you hedge out the currency uh, exposure. But yeah, 2%, given where yields are around the world, um, you're definitely going to see some more demand come in. And I think that's what has people saying, I mean, goodness, it's only the end of March. So year end at 2%. That's a long way away. So if we kept at this speed, we'd, we'd probably be well over 2%. So I think you're right. That's kind of factored in. And we may get some reprieve. You know, people, even your behaviors, even if things start to open, people may be slow to kind of do as much as they did. So I think you're right. People think some, some buying demand will come in, and that's why we're not looking at 3% at the end of the year, and that 2% sure. is not too bad from where we are now. I mean, goodness, we're over 170 basis points on the 10-year. All right, Liz, okay. always great to catch up with you. Liz McCormick, Bloomberg, senior FX and rates reporter. Uh, so she's in foreign exchange over at uh, Bloomberg. It's an interesting argument. I mean, you think about it, like in, in Europe, 
yields are basically negative, uh, <laughs> which is crazy. Uh, where else can you get like the ultra safe return of 2% right now other than, than U.S. bonds? And I'm talking ultra, ultra safe, like guaranteed pretty much safe. Uh, it's hard. It's hard to find that anywhere. Four nominees who have served as public defenders, four who are members of the eight. And, and I think that's uh, that's going to be a big, uh, I think she's totally right. Uh, it's going to be a big catalyst for keeping those uh, yields stable. Uh, maybe maybe not as high as, uh, uh, maybe not as high as, uh, what, what am I trying to say? As, uh, as, as high as, uh, wow, I'm trying to, where are we going? Uh, the point of this is we're so worried about bond yields going up. Maybe they'll hit that 2%. But maybe that 10 years is not going to go up to 2.5% like a lot of folks had feared. Uh, in the long run, it wouldn't surprise me if we see the 10 years somewhere around 2.25 to 2.5. But uh, in, in the short or even 2% here uh, in, in the near term. But uh, it's true. You know, as, as these yields rise, there are going to be a lot more people wanting to buy these bonds. And they might almost want to pull off a GameStop on, <laughs> on bond yields because so many people are shorting bonds right now. Religious freedoms and property matters. Sources say Secretary Blinken will repudiate the okay, Pompeo report in addition to other Trump era Switch. policies. As the trial for Derek Chauvin. How do you see it right now? Well, I would say, first of all, the, the, the tariffs are a very important part of the phase one deal. I mean, they really are. They offset uh, technology theft benefits, subsidies, uh, closed market, and the like. So they're a very important part. So I would say there are people in China who who want this deal to be successful, and there are people who don't, hawks who don't. Uh, and the same thing is probably more or less true in the United States. I think that, that the economic people over there want the deal to succeed. They realize this was an important uh, uh, beginning of a process of setting rules that work for both of us, and they want it to be a success. They made a commitment. This is interesting. If they do include uh, oh, a phase one trade deal, okay, okay. I thought maybe they would include some of these things in um, in the infrastructure package. Okay, so this they're talking about the, the trade negotiation. The jury's still out, uh, but but I'm you know I'm hopeful that that this will be the basis of moving forward. I, I make one other point real quickly. Also, Larry, and that is it. Hey, hey Alex uh, from Kazakhstan. Uh, there's a big fan club of me, Kevin. Oh, that's awesome. Hope one day you'll visit. Oh, that's super cool. I'd love that. And you bought the dip on Neo and Tesla. Congratulations. Good job. Uh, not conclusive now, but China just signed a deal with Iran. And China is kind of big financier of Iran, maybe their largest financier and purchaser, I presume, of Iranian oil. Are you concerned on the one side, the Biden administration seems to want a rapprochement and a new nuclear deal with Iran, but on the other side is in fact following your lead and Trump's lead uh, on being tough on China. Can those two work together, a deal with Iran, but staying tough on China? Well, well, I sort of had the same problem you do. It's troubling to me. They've always had sort of a soft spot for Iran that I- I'm going to back off this. That's a, that is going to be a very difficult balance is uh, trying to have like a nuclear deal with Iran, but then at the same time being happy and chill with China or coming to some kind of deal, a trade deal with China. Numbers. It's nice to be here, Sarah. You know, the, the results are, uh, in my opinion, a direct result of the journey that we've been talking about. You know, we've been, we've been positive with the, all the way through this year, and this quarter was no different. Uh, if you break down the quarter, we saw, you know, a lot of structural sustainable mix shift happen between our consumables verticals into premium verticals such as hard goods or proprietary brands and healthcare that actually drove, uh, you know, a tremendous uplift in gross margin. And then, uh, you know, there's a little bit of uh, profit taking that is going on uh, or that we realize due to, uh, you know, the, the strong pricing position in the marketplace right now. You know, the, promotion, the promotional environment was generally a bit muted. Uh, but if you, even if you subtract that, uh, you know, we would have delivered a pretty solid positive quarter, both on the profit basis and on a net sales basis. It's our first uh, $2 billion quarter in the history of the company and something that we're tremendously wow. proud of. So, so the question is now the staying power. It looks like you are giving a forecast. What, what are you seeing now in, in just recent weeks? And as more people get vaccinated and economies start to open up more, are you seeing any changes in, in trends or spending? 
Yeah, Sarah, you know what? The, the, the dynamics of this past year and our performance have provided us an advanced look into Chewy's future. And we believe that future is bright and, and the momentum is sustainable on the back of tremendous market opportunity that's come in you know, across a secular shift that's happening on, towards e-commerce channels, which we believe is largely durable and permanent. And in addition to that, all of our efforts that in the past I've talked about, you know, our focus on growing healthcare, our focus on growing proprietary brands, uh, adding more and more active customers to our platform. I mean, we serve over 19 million active customers at this point. And if you notice, uh, you know, those customers on a year over year basis are spending more with us. So in 2020, these- Well, of course they're spending more. I, I feel like people have more money right now, but the question is, how, how long is their growth going to sustain? Now, I hope it sustains. I, I honestly think buying this stuff online is incredible. I think one of the things that I would do if I were a Chewy investor is I would try to price match this. Let's let's try this. Let's just for giggles, okay? Let's just, just for gigs here, just so I don't get cookied. Uh, let's go into a private browser here just for giggles. All right, let's, let's try this. Maybe, maybe they don't have it. I mean, what do I know? Auto ship and say, wow, this has become very Amazon like that's incredible. Okay. So this one's bigger. Uh, can I find one that's the same size? That's, that's definitely cheaper. If these are the same 2.2 ounces. No, this is a seven ounce jar. Okay. I want seven ounces. Can I get a seven ounce jar? Uh, those are four. Oh, here we go. 7.06. Whoa. No way. How is it that cheap on Chewy? What? Look at that. Oh my gosh. So somebody here in the comments says some things are better on Amazon. Th some things are better on Chewy. Yeah, but I mean, look at this. This is the same freaking thing. $9 and 80 cents. Versus, and I just randomly picked this. I mean, I was trying to buy a goldfish. Okay, let's let's try something else. What? Okay, let's try Meow Mix, okay? All right, Meow Mix, what is this? This is a 22-pound bag. 22. How is that not the same? They look the same. They were, see, 7.06 ounces. Unless it's with the algae. Is, is that maybe a difference with, with the algae? Flake food? Vitamin C enriched. Oh, this is plus. Oh, you're right. They're not they're not the same. Not the same. You're right. Those were not the same. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. We we gotta have it the same. Vitamin C. They gotta be the same. In fairness, they should be the same. Uh I can't find the same. That that makes it difficult. Vitamin C enriched. No, not the same. Okay, fine then. Yeah, I was gonna say that's a, a substantial difference. Okay, fine. Let's go to the cat food. And let's, let's, again, we got to make sure they're the same. Yeah. One gives the algae. He's got vitamin C. I don't know. I don't have a pet, but this is why we got y'all in the chat. <laughs> uh, okay. We want the 22 something. We want like a commodity that we can compare 22 pound bag pack of two. Okay. Uh, so there are two of them here. Original choice. Yeah. Mix. This one's got a bowl on the picture, but this one doesn't have a bowl. We like bowls. Okay, so the packaging is a little different here. We get a bowl here. We don't get a bowl here. But uh, other than the packaging being slightly different, not having the bowl versus having the bowl here versus having the bowl, it appears that uh, these would be around $24 uh, per bag. And these over here are $15. Can we agree that these are the same? Are these the same? I think we can agree these are the same. Uh, let's go to Walmart. Uh, meow mix is meow mix. No difference. Okay, good. 22 pounds. I, I don't know. 22. No, I don't want the 30 pound bag. I want 22 so I can price compare you jerks. Stop changing the quantities on me. You make me do division. It's rude. I think they are fine. Uh, all right. Oh, here we go. 22 pounds, 22 pound bag. 1598. Wait, but they could just be selling this through uh Chewy. Nope, sold and shipped by Walmart. Okay, so Walmart's selling the 22 pounder for 1598. They're selling it for 1598. Amazon's ripping you off. But they're also they don't also have a prime option here. Uh but yeah, you're you're getting ripped off on the Amazon one here. Okay, so Amazon, Amazon's losing so far. So I got I write this down, okay? 
Option number one uh, on, on the Meow Mix. Meow Mix. Uh, we'll do Walmart, Chewy, and Amazon. Walmart and Chewy win one point. Okay, let's let's do another one. I don't know why we're doing this, but we are. All right, let's do some let's do some wet food at for dog. We want to try to be as random as possible, and that's not too hard for me to do. Be random. <laughs> and after all, now we're we're comparing. I'm about to compare digestive care food for for dogs. Okay, I hope this is. I mean, that's got a lot of reviews. So, case of 12, 13 ounce cans of digestive care, whatever. I don't know what this is. It's probably some kind of food. Well, it says does say dog food. Okay, 12 times 13 ounces available from these sellers. See, but it's none of it is, is and it has to be vet approval required. What the heck? How am I supposed to buy it then? I can't buy it. All right. I don't want to have to get like a prescription for my dog to buy some food. If I don't like his poops, I want to give him digestive care stuff. Is that that hard? I don't know. Maybe. All right, fine. Chopped ground dinner variety pack. Okay, I can, I can jive with the variety pack. Pedigree variety pack, 13.2 ounces, case of 12. Oh, they got to make it so difficult. Like Amazon just doesn't, I don't think Amazon competes here. I mean, none of this stuff, none of this stuff is uh, is is like comparable easily. I don't understand. Like find me something that it can please like price match here. Uh, I don't know. Let's let's go to something else here. Oh, shop by bird. Can I buy a bird here? Shop by parakeet. I should be able to get some parakeet stuff pretty cheap here. Oh man, this makes me want a bird. I'm about to go buy a parakeet for Jack. Oh no, no, this is like my childhood. Oh my gosh, Kevin, no, no. Oh my gosh, I think I'm gonna buy a bird. Oh. Man, I grew up with parakeets. Okay. I also don't want to clean the cage all the time because you know Jack ain't gonna do it. All right, here, let's let's try this. Bird treats. All right. Get a parrot and keep him behind you. <laughs> uh, that would be animal cruelty. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Pack of three, 12 count. Can I get a 12 count over here? They make comparing impossible. Two pack, 12. Oh, this could be a 12 pack. 12 count. With the first one up here. This this looks like a 12 pound. Okay, but bundle of two. Maybe I could get the bundle of two because I saw Prime over here. I think I'm not going to do this again. I think I'm just going to do this one more time here. Okay, the two pack bundle count of two is 1328 here. And on Amazon, it's uh 16. Chewy's Chewy's kicking it. We're killing it, I should say. They don't want you to compare. I know they make it difficult. Nine dollars on Walmart, though. Oh, Walmart just took it. Wait, 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 wait. We're looking at the two pack. Sorry, sorry. Two pack. Two pack. Pack of two, seven ounces. Is this right? Pack of two, seven ounce, twelve individual. Well, this is not the same. Of course, they make it difficult. Uh, seven ounce pack of two. I don't know. If that's the same. Two pack. Oh, we'll click it. This is sold by a different company. Okay, so it's a little bit different package. So right here, I have to say Chewy wins again. We're going to do one more look at Chewy here. And well, I don't know. Chewy, this is actually impressive. Okay, let's do uh, let's do some premium cat food as the next thing. Uh, this is the last thing we're going to do here. Because cat, easy to compare if you compare the UPC. Yes, yes, probably, probably much easier. Why is all the wet food bad reviewed? Like it's all four star. Like how do humans know the difference? <laughs> Are humans trying this stuff? I've I, like, I've eaten, the, I, I'm sorry, I'm not eating this stuff. I've bought a ton of this kind of cat food. Fussy Cat Premium Tuna. Okay, I, I have to say that branding's pretty brilliant. Fussy Cat. Cats are fussy. <laughs> well, that's like the reputation, isn't it? Okay, so Fussy Cat Premium Tuna. With mussels? Are they from Brussels? With salmon. No, we want with salmon. Not mussels from Brussels. We want salmon. Okay, this is the last price comparison we're doing here. Uh, salmon. Here we go. 24 pack. Okay. All right. 24 pack. That's with mussels. No, we want with salmon. 
Why? Why they got to be so complicated? Okay. Salmon, 24. Salmon, 24. Again. Those are the same. Are they the same? They're exactly the same, folks. That's exactly the same. Make sure the can size is the same. Uh, it was like two point something ounces, right? 2.82 ounces. 2.82 ounces. It's exactly the same. And again, Chewy beats their pricing. Salmon. Maybe if I put it in all caps, they'll give me salmon. No. No. Fine. Muscles. Okay, last one, okay? That's not how you spell muscles. Mm, here we go. Muscles. 24 pack of the muscles formula. All right, last last thing. And then, then we got to go back to the sticks, okay? Muscles. Muscles from Brussels. Uh, that's Is that a variety or is this tuna formula? This could be it. Is this the mussels? Oh, here, tuna and oh, tuna and mussels. Here we go. Pack of twenty-four, premium fussy cat. Okay, and then let's go to che let's go to Chewy, fussy cat with mussel. Mm, here we go. Oh, oh, oh! This is gonna be this is gonna be the first time we've actually had something price competitive here, folks. Price compet. We're gonna go to the sticks in a second. Hold your freaking horses. Okay, so. Walmart's not competitive because they don't they don't actually sell this product. But Amazon, this is the first time we have seen Amazon perfectly price match uh something with uh with the uh, but that's subscribe and save. No one time purchase as well price matches. So Amazon's trying to be competitive with Chewy, but so far it looks to me like Chewy is kicking their butt. So good job Chewy. Chewy Investor relations. Chewy investor relations. Let's look at their press release here. Announces. Okay. Uh, can I PDF this? PDF, please. Ah, whatever. We'll just do it here. Let's look at their. We we got it. We got to look at it really quick because they just reported. So why not? Here we go. Ah, oh, there's the source. Okay, fine. whatever. We'll just do it right here. Uh, for the fifty-two weeks ended, we had income. Oh, that's net income. Oh, that's a fancy table they did here. Give me the real table. What is this crap? This is not what I want. But I think this is all I'm going to get. Uh, you guys suck. Come on. Give me the revenue. I want the top line. Where's the top line comparison? Stupid. All right. Well, their earnings call is coming up. All right. Here we go. Net sale. I mean, I guess they'll give us the highlights. Okay, fine. Uh, net sales grew 47%, gross margin of 25.5% expanded, 1.9%. That's good. Their gross margin's going up. Their loss is not as bad as it used to be. Be interesting to see what the projections are on here. Good margin, though. Uh, gross margin, especially on pet food, very competitive. And their EBITDA margin improved 3% as well. These are really good earnings results on Chewy. That's very, very good. I wish they would just get it. Can I have the SEC filing here, please? No, no, of course they don't have it yet. Jerks. Quarterly results. Can I get can I get the actual filing? Oh, wait, here. Shareholder let in press release SEC filing. Nope. Nope. Shareholder letter. I mean, I don't care about the letter. Do I care about the letter? Nope. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here are the financial statements. Okay, okay, okay. And then we're gonna go to the sticks. Chewy financial statements. Net sales. Uh, 52 weeks ended. Here we go. That's really incredible growth. Cost of goods sold. I want to compare this here. So COGS, 7146, uh, sorry, 5325 divided by 7146. Uh, yeah, that's about 25% versus 46, 3702. That's good. That is improvement. Yeah, that is that 1.9% improvement on, on the gross there. Advertising. They did they did push our margin up or I'm sorry advertising up about uh, what is that about twenty percent income for the fifty two weeks ended okay they went negative they did go negative so we had earnings per share loss profitable on the thirteen week though oh profitable on the thirteen week they could be turning profitable oh my goodness see because if you did. If you multiply this by, uh, what is it? 13 weeks is the quarter. So by four, 20 cents of earnings. What's the Chewy, what's Chewy stock price at? 
Chewy, not Chevy. Chewy stock. And we'll go to the sticks. 80. Um, oh, 87. Oh, it's up almost 10%. Well, yeah, because these numbers are good. Uh, 87.7 divided by 0.20 cents in earnings. Yeah, it's massive, massive multiple. But it's certainly gotten a lot cheaper over this last year. Uh, well, I should say last month, not last year. It's gotten more expensive over last year. Wow, Chewy, though, really good. Not bad. I mean, that's an impressive one to pay attention to. I think Amazon's going to be a big, big competitor for them. $33 billion market cap. I mean, they're larger than Etsy. What's Etsy right now? Etsy's at $25 billion. Yeah, they're larger than Chewy's larger than Etsy? Wow. Uh, okay. All right, let's go back to the sticks. Uh, that, that was a lot. That was a lot of uh, talk about Chewy there, but I, I kind of liked it. Usually I do that kind of stuff in, in the course. Uh, like when we do our private live streams in the morning, we get excited about individual stocks and we go deep on them. Sorry, I went off on a tangent there on Chewy. I enjoyed it though. So don't make fun of my, my Chewy tangent. Now, yeah, not bad. Not bad on Chewy. All right. Uh, what else here? Cannabis ETF, Archimoto. Pretty sure Archimoto reports tomorrow. Uh, anything else happening here in the after hours? Not really. Bed Bath, Naked, no. No, no no real excitement here in the after hours. Blah, blah, blah. Boring. Tesla, what's Tesla doing? Tesla's flat in the after hours. Fine. What do we got over here? Uh, just like we had the the uh, the Call of Duty uh, finals last uh, last year, it uh, it had tremendous viewership because we had people all, all around the world actually viewing the games and uh, and being connected digitally. So um, either way, we just want to make sure that we provide that level of entertainment and accessibility wherever they may be. Uh huh. Daniel, overall, what what are you seeing in terms of user engagement and and just trends right now? Growth now versus where we were almost a year ago, and and this pandemic really started and the lockdown happened and everyone was at home and your stock was taking off as obviously as your business was. It, is it different? Well, as you can expect, when the pandemic started, uh, we had... Just a heads up, I have to say this about Chewy. It's very expensive for how long it's going to take them to get to their revenue. And by then, it's possible that Amazon could catch up and be a little bit more price competitive. So right now, the projection for earnings per share, uh, 2024 is 72 cents. Okay, at 72 cents, at today's stock price of, say, $90 divided by 72 cents, you're paying 125 times 2024 earnings for Chewy. That's still very expensive. That's still a little pricey. So not, not jumping up and down on that, that valuation. Engagement remains very, very strong. And uh, what people really Darn. care about is if you create a compelling entertainment option for them that is deeply immersive and now even more social, um, that players will continue to stay very engaged with games. And that's definitely the case with our games. Will, will mobile usage relative to other platforms pick up more as we reopen? Well, uh, mobile in general obviously gives uh, players the capability to play wherever they may go. Uh, it's incredibly important in countries like Southeast oh. Asia or Africa where people... Oh, folks. Oh, my gosh. Etsy. So remember how I just said you're paying 125 times 2024 earnings for Chewy? If you do the same thing for Etsy and you go to the 2024 projections, you're at 6.75 uh, EPS, which puts you at paying 30 times 2024 revenue. Oh my gosh, that just made Etsy look like, mm. I mean, I got, oh, I've got so much Etsy. But wow, I just love Etsy. I, I think I'm, 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 I don't know. What am I doing? I'm, maybe I'm, I'm crazy here. But uh, really like Etsy. What's Etsy doing right now? It's like 200 bucks, isn't it? Etsy, Etsy, Etsy. Where, where the heck is it? Etsy. Wow, this is one of the reasons I've loved Etsy. It's just cheap. 198. Yeah. I don't know. It's a little pricey. All right. Deals with this company. Do you think they can pull off? Even if it's not to up to the expectations that the market is pricing in at this point, do you think they're, that they're pulling off a real turnaround of the company and can be an online player? But yeah, uh, I, let me just say that. I, I think I would rather, I would, I'll focus on Etsy 
uh, over Chewy. I'm going to maintain that. I got a t- I got a huge Etsy position. Man, I'm tempted to add more, though. Ah, screw it. Let's add some more. Look at that. I don't know why I'm doing this. I don't know why I'm doing this. I don't know why. I can't help myself. I can't do I can't help myself. This is a problem. This is a mental problem. It's bad. Okay, 200 shares. 200 shares of Etsy. Oh, I just did it. Did it go through? Good to cancel after hours. I don't think it's gone through yet. What what's the at what are we at right now in after hours? Maybe I just got screwed. Probably. It usually happens. Stupid limit orders, but you have to do a limit order in the after hours. So freaking annoying. Go through. There we go. Okay. I think it went through at like 199 23, 23 or something like that. Anyway, yeah, it's bad. It's bad. That's it. I I only bought what did I buy? Hold on, I don't know what I, I don't even know what I bought. Weeble. <sighs> stupid, stupid. Stop. Where is it? Etsy. Oh, man. All right. So what did I buy? I bought uh 200 shares. 200 shares Etsy 199.38. Uh, okay, hold on. Uh, okay. All right, so that was at one ninety nine thirty eight, two hundred shares. Mm, okay. There we go. Did it. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is Etsy did not fall as much in the uh, latest here, latest sort of pullback. I want to pull their, let me pull their beta really quick. Etsy beta. Uh, and I'll, I'll pull this screen up here in a sec. They got a pretty high beta. Uh, oh, wait, sorry. That's, that's uh, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Referencing to the, uh, back to the S&P 500. Etsy's beta comes in at 1.7 and compared to the Dow. Yeah, this is kind of a high beta stock like Tesla, but that's kind of weird because, uh, oh, we're referencing the Dow. It's only like 0.6. What about the NASDAQ? Because the uh, Etsy didn't fall as much as like, uh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As much as Tesla did. Ah, huh, that's interesting. It's still a high beta stock, but it didn't fall anywhere near as much. NASDAQ. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, no, it's up there. It's almost at two for a beta. That's crazy. So is Tesla. Anyway, okay, let's listen to what Sarah's saying. ...of millions of dollars and finding a surprising way to multiply their stolen cash. CNBC's latest investigative piece, Steal and Conceal, shows these criminals are now using stolen IDs to get pandemic relief money from the government and then using those same IDs to open online investment accounts. To me, it looks like they're trying to money launder scammed money. Using my okay, name to do whatever, whatever, whatever. Let's go back to the sticks. Let's see if there's anything in the sticks. Uh, all right. Okay. It was a good day. I think. I don't know. Maybe it was. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was stupid. I don't really care. All right. So where are we? Chewy's doing really well. Mm, after hours here, we got Chewy, Arkimoto. Tattooed, Matterport, these guys doing okay here in the after hours. And, uh, oh, let's go to all stocks. And uh, Dropbox, Lemon, Lemonade giving up 1% here in the after hours. But otherwise, things are flat. It's pretty flat. Pretty, pretty flat right now. Yeah, even Tesla's flat in the after hours. Yeah. All right. Pretty flat. Boring. Although we did go shopping. <laughs> All right, folks. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate y'all. Hopefully you enjoyed the Chewy comparison. If you did, consider sharing the video. Get yourself two free stocks with Weeble so you too can start having an addiction. And uh, yeah, 
We'll see you in the future.